Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're looking to keep up with the absolute latest in HIV treatment, you've come to the right place. That's right. Today we're taking a deep dive into AGT 103T therapy. This could be a real game changer in how we approach, uh, you know, the fight against HIV. And we know your time is precious. Absolutely. So we'll break down the science in a way that's clear, uh, understandable, and we'll get into the trial results and talk about what this could mean for the future of HIV treatment. No need to get overwhelmed. The goal here really is to give you a solid grasp of AGT-103T, what's promising about it, but also, you know, what challenges still lie ahead. Now, before we uh, get into the nitty gritty of AGT-103T, it's important to remember why we're even still searching for a better HIV treatment and ultimately a cure. We're talking over 38 million people globally living with HIV. That's a huge number of people whose lives are directly impacted every single day. And while antiretroviral therapy, or as we know it, ART, has been absolutely crucial in transforming HIV from a death sentence to a manageable condition, it does have, you know, some limitations. Yeah, limitations. We're talking about a lifelong commitment to taking daily medication and... Right, daily medication. Ah. And that brings with it potential side effects. Mm. There's also the financial burden that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the psychological impact of living with a chronic condition. And a big one, if you stop taking RT, the virus will likely rebound. Mm. So RT suppresses the virus, but it doesn't eliminate it. Exactly. And that's where T-cell therapies like AGT-103T come in. They offer a whole different approach, a strategy. Okay. Instead of just suppressing the virus, the goal here is to train your immune system to actually control it. Right. So essentially, it's retraining your body's defenses to fight HIV on their own. Exactly. Now, AGT-103T, this is developed by American Gene Technologies. It's not a pill. It's not a vaccine. No. It's a personalized cell therapy. Yeah. So to understand its potential, we have to look at the cellular level. That's where the real action is. So the process starts by collecting some of your own T cells. And as we know, these are immune cells that HIV targets. They're a key part of your body's defense that unfortunately HIV exploits. Right. And once these T cells are collected, they go through this very complex process of genetic engineering in a lab. So scientists use something called a lentiviral vector, which is a harmless modified virus, to deliver new genetic instructions into your key cells. So it's kind of like a postal service for genes. That's a great way to put it, yeah. And what are the key modifications they're making to the T cells with this postal service? So there are two main changes. First, they disable the CCR5 receptor on the surface of the T cells. This CCR5 receptor, it's like a doorway that HIV uses to get into cells. By blocking that doorway, those modified cells become resistant to infection. Okay, so changing the locks on your doors to keep the intruders out, got it. Yeah. It's the second modification. Well, that's where things get even more interesting. They essentially reprogram these cells to recognize a specific HIV protein, a key one called GAG, and they equip these cells to trigger an attack on HIV using something called RNA interference, which basically messes up the virus's ability to replicate. So now these cells aren't just resistant, they're actively searching and destroying the virus. So it's a double whammy. You've got the defense blocking the entry, yeah. and then you've got the offense actively targeting the virus, mm. all within your own cells. That's right. What happens after they make those modifications in the lab? Well, these super T cells, as we like to call them, they get multiplied in the lab to get a big enough army of them, oh. and then they're reinfused back into your body. So you're basically giving your immune system this customized upgrade specifically designed to fight HIV. Exactly. You mentioned this is different from CAR T therapy, which is used in cancer treatments. What's the big difference when it comes to HIV? CAR T therapies, they usually target just one marker on cancer cells. But HIV, it mutates, it changes, which makes it harder for a single target to stay effective. The cool thing about AGT-103T is that it targets multiple viral components at the same time, including that gag protein. This makes it harder for HIV to escape detection. So it's casting a wider net, making it much tougher for HIV to hide. Exactly. And early data suggests that these modified T cells can persist in the body for months. They act like a living drug, providing ongoing protection. A living drug that's really fascinating. Okay, we've talked about the science, the mechanics of how it works. Let's get to the results from the human trials. Right, let's dive into that data. So American Gene Technologies has conducted two phase one studies since 2020, and the early findings, they're pretty promising. They are. 
Let's start with Phase 1A. What was the focus there? So Phase 1A, which ran from 2020 to 2022, included seven participants. The main goal at this stage was to figure out if AGT-103T was safe for humans. And the good news is there were no serious adverse events reported. That's always a good sign, a crucial first step. Yeah. Were there any signs that the therapy might actually be working at this early stage? Yes, actually. So besides safety, they found that the modified T cells successfully took hold in the participants. They became part of the immune system. And what's even more exciting, these cells boosted levels of something called GAG-specific CD4 plus T cells. In some cases, they increased these levels by up to 300 cold. That suggests the engineered cells were recognizing and responding to HIV. Wow, a 300 fold increase, that's substantial. Mm -hmm. And then you had phase 1B, which ran in 2023 and 2024. What was different in this study? Phase 1B, which had six participants, included what's called analytical treatment interruption, or ATI. This is where participants, under close supervision, temporarily stop taking their regular RT medication. The idea is to see if the AGT-103T can control the virus on its own without the usual help from ART. That's a big step because it directly tests how well the therapy works independently. What happened when they stopped RT? Well, during that first ATI, viral loads did initially spike, which is expected when you stop RT. However, this spike was followed by a tenfold increase in another type of immune cell called HIV-specific CD8 plus T cells. That indicates the body was fighting back, likely because the AGT-103T therapy was kicking in. Interesting. And what about the second ATI? Any changes or further developments? The second ATI, that's where things got really interesting. They saw a big drop in peak viremia. That's the highest level the virus reaches after stopping RT compared to what you'd usually see. And get this, in some people, the viral set points, which is the level the virus settles at without treatment, stabilized at a much lower level. We're talking 7,000 to 25,000 copies per milliliter, and all this without any RT. That's a big reduction without needing medication. Very promising. Now, there was also a completed phase one trial with a larger group overall, right? Yes, that's right. They combined the data from both phase 1A and 1B, a total of 17 participants. This reinforced the good safety profile. No serious side effects reported across the whole group. That's really important as they think about making this therapy available to more people. Absolutely. And based on this encouraging phase one data, they're moving on to phase two trials. What's the focus going to be in these larger studies? The main goal in phase two is to evaluate how well AGT-103T works in a larger and more diverse group of people. They'll be looking at how well it controls the virus over longer periods and how it affects key markers of HIV infection and overall immune health. These trials will give us more solid data on how well it works and for how long. Right, because we need that longer term data. There was also a really interesting case of one particular participant in the trials, right? Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, this one participant, after stopping a right, their viral load went up to about 15,000 copies per milliliter, which is expected. But then, get this, their viral load went down to undetectable levels without any medication for six months. Wow, six months undetectable without meds. That's incredible. And it brings up the idea of a functional cure. Exactly. That's the big question everyone's asking. Is AGT-103T a true cure? And to answer that, we have to be clear about what cure actually means when it comes to HIV. Right, because cure can mean different things depending on the condition. So what's the distinction we need to make with HIV? Well, there's a functional cure and a sterilizing cure. A functional cure means you can control the virus long term without needing daily medication. You might still test positive for HIV, but your viral load would be undetectable, meaning you're not infectious, and your immune system stays healthy without drugs. That's what the early data from ADT-103T is suggesting might be possible. That six-month period of undetectable virus, that's a glimpse of what a functional cure could look like. Okay, so controlling the virus to the point where it's not a threat, it can't be transmitted, and you don't need daily medication. That would be a huge change for people with HIV. What about a sterilizing cure? A sterilizing cure? That would mean getting rid of every single HIV-infected cell in the body. As of now, AGT-103T hasn't shown that it can do that. It can reduce viral reservoirs, those hiding places where HIV can stay dormant, but it might not eliminate them completely. It's like those reservoirs are bunkers where HIV can hide out even when it's suppressed in the blood. Got it. So while it's looking really good for a functional cure, we need to be realistic about completely wiping out the virus. What are some of the other challenges that still need to be addressed with this therapy? One big challenge is scalability. 
Making personalized T-cell therapies like this is complex, expensive, and time-consuming. Each batch has to be made individually for each patient using their own cells. Right, so that level of personalization could limit how available it is if costs and production times stay high. Are they working on ways to overcome this scalability issue? Mm. Yes, American Gene Technologies is putting a lot of effort into automating parts of the production process. They want to make it faster and cheaper to manufacture these therapies. That way, more people could benefit if it proves to be effective in those larger trials. And another big question is long-term durability, right? We've seen good results in the short term, but what about years down the line? Absolutely. We need to see data from studies that follow people for five years or more to be sure that AGT-103T really does control the virus safely and effectively over a long period. Those phase two trials starting in 2024 will be really important for providing that long-term data from a much bigger group of people. That'll give us a much clearer picture of its true potential. It's good to know they're focused on those longer term studies. Yeah. It reminds us that this is still early and more research is key. I remember seeing a quote from Dr. Marcus Conant, AGT's uh, chief medical officer, that seemed to sum up the current view on AGT 103T. Yeah, and if we were to put his thoughts into words, it might be something like, while AGT 103T isn't a magic bullet that eliminates HIV entirely, the results we've seen so far are the most significant step we've taken towards freeing people from the burden of daily art. So there's cautious optimism, which is understandable at this stage. Let's quickly recap those key findings from phase one. Sure. They saw up to a 90% reduction in viral reservoirs in some patients. That's a big impact on the hidden virus. They also saw CD4 counts go up, which is crucial for a healthy immune system. And those modified T cells, they lasted for over 18 months in some people. That points to a long lasting effect from a single treatment. So those are all really positive signs. But HIV is a tricky virus, right? Hmm. What are the big hurdles that still stand in the way, even with these advances? The two main challenges with HIV are its ability to mutate rapidly, potentially evading treatments, and its ability to hide in those viral reservoirs, making it invisible to the immune system and drugs. That's why AGT's approach with AGT-103T is so smart. It's a two-pronged attack blocking the virus from entering new cells and boosting the immune response to target existing infections. This makes it much harder for HIV to mutate and escape. So bringing it back to our listener, what does all this mean for you and for everyone affected by HIV? Well, AGT-103T offers a hopeful look at a future where managing HIV could go from daily pills to a one-time or infrequent treatment that controls the virus long-term. And while a complete cure, getting rid of every bit of HIV might not be right around the corner, the data on AGT-103T is really exciting. It suggests that a functional cure where people can live healthy lives without needing daily art might be a real possibility. We hope this deep dive has given you a good understanding of this promising therapy. As results from those larger phase two trials come out, make sure to stay informed, look for credible sources, and always talk to your doctor about any questions or concerns you have about HIV treatment. And one last thought. Imagine if therapies like AGT-103T really do work on a large scale. What would that mean for the millions of people living with HIV not having to take those pills every day? What would it mean for the global effort to finally end the HIV epidemic? It's something to think about as this research continues. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.